Hi, hi, how are you? I'm Jean Harville, and I am the creator of Helping Kids with, with Learning, also the creator of Raising Motivated Kids Free Facebook group. I'm also the creator of the Rethink Learning Academy. So nice to see you today. So, what do I mean by change your story and watch your kids' self-confidence soar? Okay, so this is the third part in a series that we started, I guess it was last week, and I wanted to kind of bring us up to speed with it. If you haven't watched the other two, the part one and part two, you can always, when you finish listening to or watching this video, you can scroll down the page and find those. But just for now, just to kind of recap and to bring us up to speed for today. So what, um, what we were doing is taking a look at, and we know that as parents, Sometimes we have stories that we bring along with us from childhood that we have maybe have kept us from, you know, like stepping up or stepping out and asking questions or, or being a part of a committee or something we kind of hold back because we're afraid of judgment. Because perhaps we had a story when we were growing up, whether it was before age seven or if it was during their school education time um, of being judged, right? And so things like that happen as we're growing up and we, we kind of just take them in, take note of them, put them into our brain, wire them into our brain, especially if we have an emotion about it. And our brain doesn't, t doesn't know if it's good or if it's negative, you know, thought, they just, that your brain just says, okay, you keep ruminating or keep thinking the same thought and you're adding this emotion to it. So we're gonna hardwire it for you. So this is your subconscious brain. Great subconscious brain, keeps you safe and make sure, especially like if you're about ready to step across the street and step in front of a car, your subconscious brain says, whoa, 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 and backs you up, right? And so your subconscious brain is great because it keeps you safe. Um, but it can also keep you from moving forward if you've hardwired the wrong messaging into your brain. And you don't know that this is happening. This is not your fault, not at all. But now that you're becoming aware of perhaps there's some things that happened when you were younger, and maybe that's how you're parenting, you're parenting from that belief or, or that false belief or true belief, whichever, you know, that you created into your brain, hardwired into your brain. So now that you're realizing this, that you actually can shift and actually um, train your brain to think differently so that you're parenting from a different place. So that's what I mean by changing your story and watch your kid's self-confidence soar. All right, so let's just kind of bring ourselves up. So the first thing to do in order to figure out, especially if you have negative thoughts that go through your brain and you're wondering like, where did that come from? That's generally not who I am. I'm usually a very happy, joyful person, but why am I holding back wanting to go in and, um, you know, right now we have COVID, so maybe speak to the teacher over Zoom about something that's going on with your child um, in education. Perhaps is uh, wanting to join a committee, maybe in your church and be a leader. Um, perhaps is, I don't know, going door to door, um, helping your child sell uh, Girl Scout cookies. Maybe you're not really into that interaction. You don't know, right? And so something kind of holds you back sometimes. And so what you want to do is you have these negative comments that come through your head, your brain. And so what you want to do is grab those, like what was that comment? Instead of just letting it go or having it continue to ruminate on that, write it down. Take a paper or pencil and write it down or a pen, write it down. Don't just click it into your uh, your computer or in your notes and you're on your phone, but really actually write it down because the brain loves to see it written and to feel it written and to, and you can even say it out loud to hear it written. Your brain wants to hear that, right? Because it really makes it more relevant as that, well, hmm, I wonder what this is, what's going on here. So once you have written that down, and you kind of think about, you'll have a different reaction. You'll have maybe a couple of reactions. One would be, okay, I, I can see where that may have come from, or your brain will automatically start refuting that. Said, no, that's not true. That absolutely is not true because I have evidence where I raised my hand to volunteer to do a, a certain project that I would never have volunteered before, and it was actually really good. It, it turned out really well. Or you might say, you know, I, um, I enjoyed 
uh, going in and talking to the teacher, we came to a great agreement for my child. Or, you know, you can think of those things that were difficult for you. Like maybe if you were in school um, and you had a paper, a research paper to write. Who likes to write research papers? There may be some of you on here that do, but I don't. <laughs> and so, it, because I, I think of the massive project that's ahead of me, I have to go and look up and research, you know, all this information online. Of course, when I was in school, it was actually going to the library and digging out reference books, but that, you know, just takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. Now that we have computers, it's a lot easier, but uh, it can be a lot targeted in your search. But the point is you have to do all this research and you probably have need to do it from several different sources. Um, and then you have to compile it all together and then you have to write it and you need to have the paragraphs formulated correctly as to how you know you're supposed to be writing it and i remember you know in school it just seemed like this massive overwhelming project but you know what i figured out how to get through it i broke it up and i and i figured out how to do it so now whenever a massive project is put in front of me you know actually before i started doing my my uh, my brain priming I um, now when I you know I, I would get those massive projects and I would say nope I don't want to do that don't have time nope no 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 but after I have realized and looked back and refuted that you know what I can do massive projects I can just break it apart and go step by step by step right so whatever it is for you whatever kind of gave you that negative like who I don't want to do that there's no way um, you know maybe here's an idea maybe you had, were placed into a situation when you were younger, maybe you got locked into a car accidentally, or you couldn't get out of, a, uh, out of some place, and it scared you, and you felt like claustrophobic, or you know something that was really scary. So you avoided your whole life being placed in that position of being someplace and being like in, maybe flying on an airplane. You knew you couldn't escape an airplane once it's in the air and you felt more claustrophobic about it, right? And so that has followed you along. So it would keep you from moving forward into different experiences because you thought, man, if I was ever placed into a position where I might feel that claustrophobic feeling, I'm going to avoid that. So what, you, what you're doing like with your negative thoughts that are going through your brain, if it's something like, ooh, that just kind of brings up that story, like I can't do that because I might get trapped and not be able to get out. That's a negative thought. And, and so you can write that down and you can start thinking about times when you actually have overcome that. Because oh, through the years, I have overcome that and I have realized what I can do to... Um, to not have that feel, that feeling of fear of being trapped. And so I can say, you know what? I remember when I was able to uh, fly internationally across uh, to China and to adopt my two girls twice. And we've also been on another trip three times. So I was able to conquer that, that feeling, that claustrophobic type feeling. And so I can write that down and say, this is not true anymore because I have found evidence where I was able to overcome that that feeling of claustrophobia and so those are some you can just think about for yourself what is it that holds you back sometimes and you're like why am i holding back what is that negative thought that's going through what is that story that happened and how can i just you know write that down and then as you're writing it down your brain will be start working on it you know what that's not true because remember back when you were able to do you know this thing and so now my new statement is I can fly on an airplane without freaking out, right? I have I have developed ways that I can get myself on an airplane, and if I'm prepared, that I'm great. I can prepare myself. I can, um, you know, I actually use essential oils to help to calm my system down, and so that's the way that I can fly, and I feel great. Like I can do this. I can master this. I can do hard things. So that's one. That's my I statement that came out of that. A negative statement after I went through my brain thinking that is not true I can conquer that and say I can do hard things okay so then the next thing that that you do in order to wire into your brain that you can do things difficult things is to um, record and you've got all those different reasons that you found that that was not true 
you can just write them down to I statements. I can do hard things. I can figure out how to write a research paper. I can figure out all the multiple steps of that hard project. I can figure out how to put together a thousand piece puzzle. I can figure out, and so you can, you can start writing down all of the things that you can do, record those, and um, then you can listen to them. This is the last step, is you record them, like on your phone, um, and then you can listen to them every morning or evening. Now, our subconscious brain is available most of the day, but at night, as we're sleeping, the subconscious brain, we can get to our conscious brain, and we want to rewire, and the best time to listen to the recordings are just before you go to sleep and just as you're waking up. Your brain is still available, your conscious brain is available at that point. And then the subconscious brain hasn't kicked in yet and taken over and start, you know, especially when you're starting to make decisions. So that's the, what you do is you listen to that recording. And what you're doing is actually rewiring your uh, neural pathways in your brain. When you have that negative thought attached to an emotion, it becomes a belief and your, your subconscious brain says, well, I guess she believes that. So we're going to hardwire that pathway. But if you want to break that cycle of, of any uh, like procrastination or um, claustrophobia or anything that holds you back to break that, then you turn them into, the, you, you refute it, turn them into I statements, record your statements, and then listen to them. And as you're listening to them, you are creating a pathway, a new neural pathway. The old one is still there. And so you're creating this new one, making it stronger for 21 days. You know how they say it takes 21 days to create a habit? Well, that's what you're doing. You're building that 21 days, but guess what? What happens is these two pathways become equal. And so it may seem like eh, it's not working, but if you just keep going to 67 days, listening to your new pathway, the thoughts for that pathway, the old one breaks away, it literally breaks away. And there's that actually video of a brain and where pathways become stronger and then weaker ones break away. And there's a few of them on YouTube. I actually, um, I can actually put that link down below. You can take a look at it and see, and actually see this, this video is out of Harvard. It was done about 10 years ago, but it's by neuroscientists and they can actually show what's going on in the brain. So that new pathway is built, the old one is gone. And by the time you hit about 60, 67 days, you don't even have that fear or that worry anymore. It's gone. It doesn't even cross your mind because what crosses your mind is, okay, I'm gonna fly on an airplane, I'm gonna make sure I take my oils, and I'm gonna put them on, and it's gonna help me to keep, my, keep myself calm. Great, you know, great flying, no problem there. So how does this, you know, why do we want to do this as parents? And why am I telling you when it's your child that you're concerned about, about their self-confidence, right? So what you want to do is you as the parent to go through this process so that um, when you are parenting your child, you're parenting from your subconscious brain and the decisions that you make, the statements that you make are from your subconscious brain. And if you have old stories going on in your brain from when you were younger, when your, your mom may have said something, you know, that was that didn't make you feel very good and at the time but you wired it and you hear your, your mom's voice coming out of your mouth and you're like oh i didn't really mean that where did that come from it came from your wiring your your subconscious brain from when you were younger and from your mom your mom's subconscious brain from her mom and so forth down the generation and so to break that cycle the cycle then you create that new thought pattern for yourself and then you parent from a different way of thinking so parenting your children is really important that you are if there's certain things that you hear yourself say to your child be a detective and figure out where did that come from where did that statement come from and that is definitely not serving my child let me dig in and find where that statement came from go back into your memory banks go back to a situation that may have caused you to think that comment and so that's a negative thought let's refute it let's get that out of there let's rewire that so that when i'm parenting my child i'm parenting from a new positive thought belief and and i'm giving my child the right messaging the right messages so it's so important i know it's like 
we, we always say, well, how can, I, how can I motivate my child? How can I give my child um, higher, uh, better self-confidence, right? I mean, all parents want that from their, for their kids. But in order, you can't just say, you know, child, have more confidence, child. You know, you have to, um, it's like a rewiring for them. But before you can do that, you need to go back and figure out what it is that you can do. How can you support your child so that your comments and the way you act are coming from a better place in your own thinking okay so it's a uh, it's like being a detective and figuring out where did that come from that's not really the way I want to parent and I can see the results of that in my child of not being motivated or not having self-confidence also once you have figured out how to remove these negative thoughts in your own brain you can help your child to remove those negative thoughts in their brain okay so I it's like I can't transform my your child and you can't you know you and so I work with the parents and then help the parents to transform then the parents can then take the information and the way they did it and can help transform their kids so it's kind of uh, you can't transform somebody else you have to transform yourself first so anyway I, um, I, I, I geek out on this because I have found great success with it and parents that I'm working with that I have one-on-one -on -one clients are finding it to be very useful and um, so I just I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So if uh, I want you to watch for my upcoming three-part Rethink Learning Workshop and that'll be coming up probably in the next few weeks. So be watching for that. We're going to rethink learning and that's what we're doing. We're, re we're really training our brain, really training the way we're thinking and, and thinking about ourselves and thinking about our kids and just taking a different perspective on, on seeing our kids in a different light, in a different way. And in order to do that, we want to do some re reconstructing in our own brain as well. So if you um, are want to go further and go deeper with me in, in talking about your own stories, you uh, have a 15 minute chat, Zoom chat. I will put that link down below where you can uh, click it and go to my calendar and find a spot where it works for you and for me and we'll do a Zoom chat. We can talk further about any questions or issues or things on how I can help you and help you with rewiring some things that you're finding in your parenting just isn't quite the way you want to parent. And so we can delve into that um, private and one-on-one. All right, so I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.